Okay, welcome back to part two of the Top Down Shooter series. We are going to be creating the scenes in Godot today. Now, the word scene is a little bit misleading if this is the first time you're using Godot. Uh, don't think of a scene as like a level. Think of it more like a prefab in Unity. If you've ever used Unity before, it's more like a prefab. Or if you've used Game Maker, it's more like a game object. Um, however, it can represent a level, and that's the cool thing about it. It can pretty much represent a level. It could represent a component within a level that you could bring into another scene um, and build up a level using multiple scenes. And that's essentially what we're going to do. So we're going to create uh, some individual scenes for the walls. Then we're going to create individual scenes for each room and then build it into one big level. And that's going to make our management of our nodes a lot easier down the down the side here. So what I've done here, we're going to create a new node. And the first one is going to be a um, static body. Now, a static body is a static body for 3D physics. What it means is it's going to be able to deal with collisions, but it's not going to move anywhere. We don't want this moving. We don't want the walls falling all over the place. It might be funny, but it's not going to happen in ours. So we get a little exclamation mark here which says this node has no shape so it can't collide or interact with other objects that's fine we're going to sort that out in a minute what we are going to do though is go to our game models folder this is where i've imported those things and i'm going to add in the floor panel i'm just going to drag it up to static body it's going to come down below and it's going to go into the origin exactly where it was in blender so that's pretty sweet i don't need to muck about moving this anywhere then I'm going to click on static body again and add in a collision shape. And this collision shape is going to determine the shape of the, the physics collision. So we can walk on it, we can't shoot through it and so on. Now technically I don't actually need the floor to be a static body because we're not going to be using rigid bodies. We're going to be using kinematic bodies and they're only going to be working along the X and Z axis. The Y axis is up in Godot. Uh, so we will never fall through the floor, but we'll put it on there just in case we decide to use rigid bodies later. I haven't fully finished the tutorial. We may end up um, doing something cool like adding uh, rigid bodies to our enemies and uh, ragdoll physics as well. That would be fun, especially with the amount of bullets that are going to come out of this chain gun. So let's go to collision shape and we're going to click on that. And over here on the right hand side, click on new box shape. Now, that's pretty good there, but I don't want it that high. I'm gonna actually pull this down. And when I do this though, you'll see that it's I've got this snap up here. I've got the snap turned off. You probably wanna use snap since we're working with two units. I've made everything modular here. We're gonna hold shift as we pull this down and it's gonna come down in smaller increments. I'm gonna move it down to about there and then move this down like that. I'll make it one more. So completely covers that. I don't actually need it to, I just need to sit on top of it, but we'll make it completely cover that. So this is done and now I can save this and I'm gonna call it, I'm actually gonna go back here and rename this to be floor panel. The reason I'm gonna change that is because when we import it into another scene, it doesn't actually give it the name that we save it up here, it gives it the name of the root node um, in the scene. So I don't want it to just come through a static body everywhere. So I'm going to save this here. I'm going to make a new folder. Let's go down here. Uh, new folder. And I'm going to call this scenes. And then I'll save this. Control S. Save it into scenes as floor panel. Cool. All right, so we've got a floor panel scene in there. I'm going to add a new node now. We're going to make this one a wall. But once again, it's going to be static body. And I'm gonna bring in the game model, and this is gonna be wall panel. I'm gonna drag it onto the static body up there. Looks pretty good. And then I will, of course, add in the collision. Recent down the left-hand side, change that to new box shape. Uh, oops. Move that up has got the snapping. Now the box shape should fit perfectly because the default box shape in Godot is two by two. The default box in Blender is two by two and we used that two by two measurement. I did consider using one by one, but I thought why, why make things more difficult? So we're just gonna use the, the two by two 
measurement there. Now I could make this collide all the way up the top here and it may be important later, especially if we start using other physics objects. Um, but for now, actually, yeah, let's do it. Let's just drag that out. So it should say down the bottom there, I think four and then pull that up. No, nope. five. Yep, there we go. Okay, so yeah, I, I extended the eight units up. It was already two, so that's 10 units because it's scaled up five along there. So five times two is 10. All right, so that's, that's that one done. And now once again, I'm gonna call this wall panel one save this as wall panel one so on now i can repeat that with the other uh things there as well the other wall panels um but i am going to go ahead and make a new scene and this is just going to be a 3d scene i'm going to call this room one now i might be more descriptive in my rooms later but you'll see what i'm going to do here i'm going to bring in wall panel one, no, wrong one. I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna to go to my scenes. I'm gonna bring in wall panel one and floor panel one, like that. Now, when I've got these in here, I can actually move them around. So I'll click on this one and I'll move it around and I'll grab this and hit Control D and make a few duplicates. Then I can select multiple of them, Control D, Control D, and I'm just gonna lay out a floor. Now you can make the room whatever shape you want. It doesn't have to be um, perfectly square. And I'll just grab these down here. Okay, you'll see this is why it's important to use multiple scenes because if this was showing up in my main scene and I have all these floor panel uh, scenes in there, it just gets really confusing. So you'll see in a minute what's gonna happen. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the wall. I'm gonna move it to there. I'm gonna hit Control D and move, move it across one. I'll use the snapping. And for this corner, I'm actually going to put something there, even though it shouldn't be seen, just because like I showed in the uh, one of an earlier video, um, I may not have actually shown that, um, is that sometimes I've found that Godot can uh, be a little bit funky when it comes to that. Now I'm gonna delete that one because I'm gonna use it as a doorway. Uh, but I'm not gonna put anything in the doorway because the doorway is gonna be built uh, a particular way. So we're gonna leave that as it is, just completely empty. Control D and you get the idea. Now you can mix up these door panels as well. Mix up these wall panels, I mean. Um, sometimes it can look cool to have a few different ones, but don't go overboard. They should kind of look pretty consistent. All right, so there we've got a room. I might delete one of these on uh, this side here as well. Okay, now I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna call this room, I've already called it room one. Control S and I'll call it room one. Uh, room one. Okay, now what's gonna happen is when you come in here, it's quite cool because this black material here, which I will need to fix by the way, um, it looks like it hasn't actually come through in the way that I had hoped it would. So this black material, we're gonna turn the metallic specularity all the way down and the roughness should be all the way up. That should be all you need to do for that. Um, you'll see now it doesn't have any of that kind of, uh, what would you call it? Um, shininess or specularity on it. Now what's gonna happen when we bring our character in is the character might be standing right here and as they move up north, you'll see that this wall here naturally blocks line of sight. And then as they move up, well, it reveals as it goes around the corner. And so we can go like that and it looks really cool. It's just a neat little effect that, um, it's not, it's not you know, I'm not the one that invented it, but I uh, figured it out and it's pretty easy to do. So any, any beginner can do this. It's a lot easier than putting in 
um, like programming your line of sight and stuff. All right, so that's room one. Now, lastly, you can see what I can do with this. If I add a new scene and then I go down to my scenes and I add room one, oops, I'll go 3D scene and I add room one into here. I add another room one into here. And well, now I can build a whole level just using those rooms and rotating them. And I don't have 5,000 different walls stuck down here. Okay, so you wanna design a few different rooms and then you can bring them in and put them together. You could even go fully procedural if you wanted to and figure out a way to have rooms connecting to other rooms. I'd suggest maybe uh, position 3Ds and then connect the rooms based on that position. You would have to figure out an algorithm to rotate them. Uh, see if there's any overlapping stuff, maybe add some area uh, to it. That's more advanced, but it's it's a place that you could go with it and explore how procedural generation might work uh, using pre-built rooms, which is what games like Minecraft Dungeons have done more recently. So there's lots of cool stuff you can do with this. In the next video though, we're gonna create that door. The door that goes in there and animates.